Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and in April of 2025, I did a video covering the new features in Unify 9.1 and said I'd do a follow-up video once the new Unify OS 4.2 update came out to talk about the new traffic flow features. It is now May of 2025, and that feature is here. Unify's new traffic flows brings deeper insight in how devices on your network are communicating. It gives connection-level visibility right from the controller, showing source, destination IPs, ports, and protocols. So let's get started. Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structure cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that will get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now, there's nothing special you need to do to turn on this feature, but you do have to be at least at 4.2.12 of the Unify OS and the Unify application of 9.1.120. Those are the minimum versions where this is supported. Now, to get to the traffic flows, we click on the insight icon here, and we're first presented with a world map. I think it'd be cool if maybe in the future this was a pew pew map. Not that those are any better in terms of teaching you things, but it does look cool when you see pew pew maps. Look them up if you're not familiar. Now it's sorted right now to one month and all the top destinations, top clients, top regions, but then we can go one week, one day, or one hour. Now the important thing to note here, and this is throughout looking at all the flows, these options, especially the one month one, can be very taxing on the system if you have a lot of data. This is UDM Pro SE, and it still has some pausing it does when I'm looking at things from one month. And I bring that up here on this dashboard because you can filter for flows to Canada, for example, by clicking on filter flows, and it's going to narrow them down to one month. So that query might take a little bit longer. I was going to keep them simple and put them at one day. And then we can just click here and it will filter for those flows. And I'm doing this in real time. So that's exactly how long it paused. Now let's go back over here to the overview and you can see blocked traffic and that changes the colors, but it's the same concept that it's now showing the filtered flows, but only the blocked content from there. Matter of fact, blocked on internet cam LAN is quite a few. We'll talk about that in a moment because I want to show you the action item of how to look these up. But let's go over to the flows activity and give you an idea of what the flows look like. So when you click on flows, we have all the flows and we can do more granular, five, 30, one hour, six hours, one day, all the way up to one month, or you can choose date ranges here for when you want to see traffic flows. Now, I'm going to leave this at one day, and we're going to do a search for 172.234.197.213, which is forums.lawrencesystems.com. And we're going to do this in real time so you can watch how it does a search. It's not too bad, but there's a little bit of a pause here. I also want to note this. When you're looking at these, here is all the different HTTPS connections that it had. This is me going to my forums and replying to people and Having that open, we can see the protocol, the IP address, et cetera, how much total bytes, bytes sent, bytes received, so on and so forth. Pretty straightforward. Now, this one here, not marked HTTPS, this is going to be when I was probably pinging the forums. Yep, right here, protocol ICMP. So it gives you a good back and forth look at this. The thing I want to note, though, is this right here. The challenge with it is at 7.09, I did this. Well... I did this, but it took a couple minutes before it shows up here. Depending on the load of the system, there's a delay. This is not going to be real time. It's slightly delayed when it's doing lookups. It's just something that if you're trying to watch an active connection and you have it set to something like five minutes, it may take a couple minutes from the time I ping something until the time it actually shows up in the flows. This is something I wanted to just make sure that if you were trying to use this for real time, that could be something that is a bit concerning. Now let's dig into all those blocked notices that seem to be, well, very frequent here and give you an idea of how that looks. So we can choose blocked because we want to see things that are blocked. 
and we see lots of blocked and a lot of repeating IP addresses in here. And when we click on this, we see that it's block internet to cam line. Let's go ahead and click on that policy and it's gonna open up the rule I actually have for this. I think this is really convenient the way they set this up so you can not only see what policy did it, you can click and then view that policy in your firewall rules. And this is the block internet on cam LAN, and it works exactly like it said. This particular camera, and we'll go ahead and close that and go back over to it. This camera is the driveway cam. It is an Amcrest. This is not a unified camera. And I've talked before about locking down cameras and not giving them internet access. So it's trying to reach out to the internet and it's trying to reach out specifically quite a bit to 54167. 74107. And it's trying to do it over this port. And if you're curious what that is and why it's trying so hard to get there, and this is like some of the top blocks that are in here, let's go ahead and take a look. We're just going to copy this. And you can use tools like VirusTotal to get more understanding of what this IP address might be. So I'm putting in here, putting the search. And we see that it's not really a threat, which of course is not being marked as a threat, but let's look at the relations. And it is the P2P AmcrestView.com. Completely makes sense why an Amcris camera wants to go there. This is probably something built in. I believe I looked at these cameras. There's not a way to disable it, but I don't want them getting out to the internet. Hence the reason I have the rule. But you can see that this is really handy because I never had to leave the Unify system to find the data I was looking for. I only have to go externally if I want to look something up. And there's no guarantee VirusTotal will always have the answer, but there are plenty of other sites where you can do IP lookups and start investigating things. But now let's go back to all flows and talk about a few more features. We can filter for low, suspicious, or concerning. And these are flags based on the IDS system that is in here. Now, intrusion detection versus intrusion prevention, I only have it in detection mode because I wanted to go ahead and see what got flagged in here. And by clicking on this to look at things that it flagged as suspicious, and I do have it filtered for one day, it found, well, my SSH connection to RailStream. Now, if you're wondering what RailStream is, this is my friend's site and I have a VPN connection. It noticed this going out across the VPN and it found suspicious that my TrueNAS was using a VPN connection in SSH. That maybe can be flagged suspicious because it's going across some IPs. It is the ET scan, potential scan to outbounds because of the way I was doing SSH scan to get a connection set up between one TrueNAS to another for replication. So I understand what that threat is. These threats are suspicious potential logins. Note the direction. This was an outbound scan going out of a VPN. So it does track those connections. This was CamLAN, that is the LAN where my Synology NVR is. And this is an inbound connection for someone trying to log in that it found suspicious. But as I said, I don't have blocking turned on. So it's just looking at these, sees the traffic coming in, says, you know, that seems suspicious that Lithuania uh, was coming in and trying to poke at this particular system. Therefore, it's marked as suspicious. Now let's go ahead and reset this again and point out you can also do customization by clicking on more. We can filter for the action of allowed or blocked, filter for just direction. We can select source, destination. They give you a lot of filtering options to help narrow things down. And of course, you can customize the columns in here if you want different zones, source zone, etc. And plenty of customization to get this view for how you'd like it. The other thing that's of note right here is a download button and we can do a date range and we can download this all to a CSV if we want to do further examination. Now, something of note, and I've talked about this before, I do send my logs externally to a tool called Graylog. And if you go over here to system and then traffic logging and we go edit, I still have all these as select all and it does not stop the internal flows from working. It just sends all the data here over to my gray log server. And I've talked about this before because it is a great way to get real time data. Cause even though there's a delay in processing before it hits the flows, you can still send things simultaneously to an external logging server where they're going to be pumped out essentially in real time. There are two things you want to make sure are configured. It's this, and then under control plane integrations, you have the ability to have the SIM server. This is, sends everything else that wasn't covered in the first part is covered here. So you also want to make sure that the firewall default policy is checked. If you want all of the default policies, not just policies you specifically want to send out to a logging server. So with that said, this is also completely workable and can export all the logs over to Graylog. And I will leave a link down below to my Graylog video where I've also made, and I have a GitHub with 
updated extractors to parse the data that Unify sends out. Uh, they had to be updated because Unify sends new data with 9.1 that wasn't previously sent, but that's all linked down below. Personally, I'm pretty excited about this new feature and looking forward to how it matures. If you've got questions or different thoughts on this particular topic, drop them in the comments below. I always enjoy hearing from all of you. For deeper technical dives and ongoing discussions, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com, where we got a great community of people just like you to engage with this and other topics. If you want to help support the channel and what we do here, check out our Patreon or our swag store. Don't forget to like and subscribe, click that notification and the bell icon so you don't miss future videos. And if you're looking to connect with me or learn more about services we offer, head over to lawrencesystems.com. You'll find links to all my socials and more ways to get in touch. Thanks for watching. And remember, even if there's no logs, doesn't mean there wasn't an incident. Stay safe out there.